Hello and welcome to the Chase Aerospace Gaming Channel. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the latest update, or the latest around the verse, which was the uh, Star Citizen Special Edition Around the Verse Alien Languages. So this was essentially a very big update in terms of, not of gameplay or of like the code that you have on your computer, but of information we have about the game and the lore um, regarding both the Vanduul and the Xi'an languages. Or, uh, uh, apparently, uh, Xi'an can also be said as Xi'an, but that's, uh, that's a little snippet that we'll go over. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit the, the big points of the Alien Languages video, just the things that I found the most interesting. I'll leave the link to it below. You can go watch it if you want to. I understand that this topic isn't as interesting, uh, to a lot of people. But um, there's a lot of nerds in the Star Citizen community, and I count myself among them. So this was a, just a really interesting video to watch, and to see how the creation of these languages kind of uh, emerged uh, out of this process. And uh, this guy, Britton Watkins, he's actually a very creative language specialist. Um, listening to him talk about the, the way that he created um, the symbols used in the Vanduul language was just really inspiring to be honest um it was a very cool idea you know I, I, you know I'll, st I'll start with the vanduul because th they discussed the vanduul first but um so what they were talking about is the vanduul is essentially um it's mostly a militaristic species so uh, he was talking about how there are sometimes silence might be more appropriate for certain situations which, which makes sense, you know, in the military, sometimes you need to signal someone without, you know, screaming at them, you might give away your position, or, or under other circumstances. But he says that over time, they learn to use their bioluminescence, and I didn't even really know the Vanduul were bioluminescent, but now I know. <laughs> uh, they have parts of their skin uh, that can glow, and he says, um, Britton Watkins says that uh, they use this bioluminescence as a way of silently, visually signaling um, messages to other Vanduul. Um, and then the Vanduul language also comes with body body language, um, gestures, physical gestures, not just the bioluminescence. In addition to the spoken language to kind of place emphasis on feeling or emotion in, uh, in the way that they're speaking. But the way that he came up with the symbols was just really impressive to me. Um, he was talking about how the Vanduul are a very warlike uh, or war warfaring uh, militaristic species. So um, he took a look at, you know, where might a written language have originally come from. And uh, he said, in his own mind, he kind of imagined Vanduul, you know, um, they have three talons or three, three fingers with claws on the end. And so he imagined uh, during a big Vanduul war on their home planet, uh, early on in their civilization, um, around the battlefield as they were killing each other, they would mark um, their kills with their three, their three talons um, in these kind of swirly symbols, just, to, just uh, marking their kills. Um, and then he said, over time, these marks became symbols of great militaristic leaders or people who achieved great things on the battlefield. Uh, and it became essentially like a hall, like, like, like a pantheon of heroes is, uh, I believe, the wording that he used. These symbols that represented um, different, different like chiefs or, or people who, who killed a lot of other people. Um, and over time, these symbols became a kind of alphabet for a written language. Um, that's, it just kind of evolved that way. Um, and then what he did to, to actually create the symbols was he taped like three claws or claw-like things to his hand and scratched around on aluminum foil um, and then cut the shapes out of the aluminum foil and produced these symbols, which is just the coolest idea ever. I don't know why it was so cool to me, but I'm, I'm still really impressed by this guy's creativity. And then uh, he lays them all out on a table, and so you get these kind of rough, um, ancient-looking symbols. Um, very ancient-looking, very foreign-looking, 
And then, here's a, here's a really cool part. Uh, the way that the, he refined that font uh, to look like it was being used on a computer screen or being typed out. So he, he went from like these rough, like finger paint, uh, claw mark looking things to computerized, typed out fonts. Um, and that transition was just really cool to see. Uh, and he, he kind of did, he did a similar thing with the Xi'an. He didn't go into quite as much detail with how the original symbols were created uh, for the Xi'an in this video. But what he did discuss for the Xi'an is um, the two different dialects that are used by that race. So you've got the military dialect, which is, which is kind of laid back like you're talking to a close friend. Um, which which is kind of counterintuitive to to us, but I suspect that the Xi'an culture views military service as a really tight brotherhood, um, and not so formal and and stringent. More like just um, you're you're serving with your your closest friends. Maybe Xi'an culture emphasizes the relationship between soldiers to kind of they fight harder to keep each other alive, kind of thing. So maybe the Xi'an kind of placed that relational emphasis on um, their the relationship between their soldiers. And so the dialect that they use in the military is really laid back. And uh, everyone in uh, Xi'an uh, society uh, serves mandatory 30 years in the military. So everyone has this, this dialect kind of ingrained into them uh, as they develop into adults. And then plus they're they're also kind of raised and you know regular society has this more proper dialect and he goes into um, the differences between the dialect and even has an example sentence which I will play for you now. So if we if we think about the kind of funny sentence, um, Floan sucks at making jokes. Floan being a character name okay. with flow T H L being a kind of unique sound that that they have in the Dijon language. Um, if we said that in the standard dialect, we'd get olaiha toa, floan with o wa. However, in the military dialect, we'd get olaiha doad, droan vedovava. So you can kind of hear the, the difference. It's slight, but uh, it does kind of feel and sound a little bit more laid back and relaxed. So that was really the, the high level view of this really interesting uh, video discussing the, the, the new alien languages that are going to come out, which you will be able to learn. They're going, uh, uh, Britton Watkins said that he was going to create a gesture dictionary uh, in addition to um, like the regular language dictionary for the Van Duel. So th this is going to be very in depth and you will be able to learn this if you want to. And, you know, I've even heard or seen discussions by people talking about how there's there's probably or they would they would like to see incentives uh, given to like actually learn the language uh, in real life. So let's say let's say uh, this is one scenario that I saw. You were sitting in a bar, and you overhear a group of aliens talking in the corner. Well, it turns out that they were talking about, you know, jumping you in space after you leave the planet because they, they think that you got a lot of loot on your ship. But because you didn't learn the language, you don't know what they were talking about. So then you get out there and they take you by surprise and you, you have a rough time. Whereas if you had known the language, you might have been able to avoid getting jumped altogether or you might, um, you know, pack a little extra heavy on on the damage output side of things to to be able to easily fend off the attack so th these are the kinds of cool incentives or you know additionally you know maybe you're exploring a planet you run into some ancient xion ruins and you need to be able to uh read what it says on this plaque and uh go to like you know x marks the spot and and find a, a key to bring back to the the ancient ruins to unlock a door and there's a bunch of cool stuff inside you, you know something like that where there's an actual incentive to learn the language or at least keep a dictionary nearby so you can decode you know written messages on plaques and ancient ruins on the xian homeworld or something like that you know just there's so much extra 
stuff that you can do by having this uh, full language in the game. And, you know, really all, all, it, all it could come down to is just, um, you know, level design. Like you design a level, you have a little bit of Xi'an text here, you bury a key uh, un under, under a rock somewhere for the tomb, and then... And then uh, on the text, you just say where the key is buried. You can even make it a riddle if you want. But it is, and and on that, in that case, it would be much less um, gameplay mechanics, and it would just be, you know, good level design that would turn into a quest, a really cool quest, in my opinion. That would be that'd be awesome. These unscripted, just stumble across something quests are the things that make magical moments in games. When when uh, when you figure something out or you think you've discovered something for the first time, especially in a game as large as Star Citizen is going to be, so um, yeah, so this has been this has been a high level view of um, the new Alien Languages video that came out. It'll be linked in the description again, and uh, definitely go check that out because it's super interesting. Uh, all right, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.